Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to the second episode of Challenge Jimmy. This is where you, the subscriber, can send me your raw files or JPEGs that you found difficult to process and I try to give you advice that might make processing easier. Thank you to Jamin Long for today's images. I hope I'm saying your name right, I'm sorry if I'm not. Now Jamin said the biggest difficulty here was trying to blend the exposures naturally so that there wasn't black edging around the trees. So today we're going to look at how we can do that and we're actually going to combine three different exposure blending methods. Now in real time this would only take a few seconds but in the video of course I'm going to explain it so it, it seems like it might take a bit longer but usually it's a very quick process. So let's look at our files. Here is the darkest exposure which we're going to use for the sky. This exposure we're going to use for the foreground and Jamin shot another exposure where he blocked out the sun and this was to minimize any sun flare. You can see we have a little bit of sun flare along here and in this exposure it's not there. So we have a few goals. Firstly we need to blend this exposure so that we can clean the foreground here and maybe just reduce some of this flare as well. We also need to remove the chromatic aberration along the tree here and reduce some of the vignette along here. Not much but some of it. Now unfortunately this wasn't shot in RAW, we only have JPEGs. But nevertheless, if you're using Photoshop CC, you can still reduce chromatic aberration through Adobe Camera Raw. And I'm going to do it on these two files individually. So firstly, on this darker layer, I'm just going to open up Camera Raw Filter. I'm going to go to Lens Corrections, and we can zoom in. Even though this is a JPEG, you can see the chromatic aberration around the edges here. If you choose Remove Chromatic Aberration, it does a great job of reducing the reds and blues. So now all I have to do is go to manual, scroll down and remove some of the vignette. And we do that just by brightening up the corner. You can see it's brightening up here. And we can change the midpoint to the left so that we encompass a larger area. And you can see what I mean. And we're just brightening up the sky somewhat. There we go. And we press OK. Now I'm going to choose this layer and go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter again. It's very quick and then just go straight to Lens Corrections and remove Chromatic Aberration. Now you may be wondering why I didn't just import the files in Adobe Camera Raw to begin with. Well I tried that but it seems that there isn't enough EXIF information in the file so when I tried to remove the Chromatic Aberration it said it couldn't find the Camera Lens Profile in the image. So it wasn't able to make the adjustments for me. Yet when you use the filter, the Adobe Camera Raw filter, it did remove the chromatic aberration successfully. So that's why I did it like that. So to blend these two exposures, all we're gonna do is paint manually on the mask. And we do that by choosing a mask, making sure the foreground is set to black, and making sure we have our paintbrush selected. And then I just paint out the flare. And you can see we've removed the flare nicely. And now I'm just going to go up to the sun spike, which you see here. I'm going to choose the paintbrush and make sure we have a lower opacity. We can just press the number keys on our keypad to lower the opacity. So I'm going to choose 3, which means I have an opacity of 30. And again, I'm going to make the brush smaller. And I'm just going to gently paint out some of the flare here. Not too much, just a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to make this white and make sure the opacity is set to 100%. And I make this small again. And all I want to do is make sure that this particular spike is nice and strong. And I'm going to do that by clicking just at the top here once, holding shift and clicking all the way down the bottom here like this. And you see we've drawn a nice straight line. So with the mask disabled, this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. Now with that done, we need to look at blending the darker exposure. So how can we do that? In order to blend the darker exposure, oh, before we begin, I should have checked this earlier, but I didn't. It looks like the two files aren't correctly aligned. So maybe there was some movement between the shots. So I should have straightened this up at the beginning of the workflow, but I didn't realize. So I'm going to select the layers and go to Edit, Auto Align Layers. And you can press OK there. Or 
If you're a Raya Pro users, we just go to Raya Pro and Auto Align Layers. And like I say, this should have been done at the beginning of the workflow, so my apologies. We're just making sure that everything's nicely done. Yep, it's all nicely lined up. Now, one way we could try and blend exposures is using a gradient mask. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But let me show you what the results are. I'll just do it very quickly here. So we've basically blended in the sky by using a gradient mask, which you can see here. And it looks okay, it looks quite natural, but the tree for me looks a little bit too dark. So that didn't quite work the way we wanted it to. But we can actually combine exposure blending techniques to get a much better result. So we can combine gradient masks with a different exposure blending technique. And I'm going to use Rapid Blend If. And with Raya Pro users, you can just go to Rapid Blend If and Dark. And you'll see now, we've blended in the sky very nicely and naturally and we've blended in the tree beautifully but the foreground is not looking good so in this situation while these areas have blended nicely we need to now find a way of blending the foreground out and that's where we can combine exposure blending techniques and use a gradient mask and now when we do the before and after you can see that the tree is nicely exposed for the sky nicely exposed for and the foreground is nicely exposed for. So it's blended everything very nicely. Now if you're not a Raya Pro user, I'm going to show you how you can do this without Raya Pro. So to begin with, we need to blend the darker exposure into the brighter exposure. So we do that by double clicking on our darker exposure. Then you see where it says underlying layer. We hold down Control and Alt on a PC or Option and Command on a Mac and left click this particular arrow and you'll see it snaps in half and just drag it all the way to the right and press OK and that's how you do rapid blend if for darker exposures for the gradient mask we're just going to create a nice mask here go to the gradient tool click on this area here and make sure foreground to background is set and press OK now looking at your foreground to background colors make sure the foreground here is set to white and the background is black now I'm going to hold shift down and drag from the top of the image to the bottom of the image and let go. And there you can see if I press alt or option on a Mac, we can see our gradient mask. And we can see it's done a very natural blending job. Now remember, you can always reduce the opacity of this layer if you think it's a little bit too strong. Or if the foreground you feel has become a little bit too dark, you can choose a brush, make sure the foreground set to black. And you can, at a very low opacity, just gently blend out some of the areas that you want to brighten up. So there's the before and after. And you can see it's done a very nice, smooth job of blending the exposures. There's no edging around the trees. In fact, the only edging that exists is the little bit of chromatic aberration around the tree. But I'm not finished. We could end it here if you want, and we've done a decent job. It's nice and smooth. But much of this area is still a little bit overexposed. And unfortunately, in this darker exposure, the sun is a little bit blown out. So we didn't quite capture the full range of light in our scene. So all I've done is I've duplicated this layer and made it back to its original form. And my goal is to try and bring more information back into the highlights, which is very difficult to do for a JPEG, but not impossible. Now, I actually created a tutorial on this recently on YouTube in my Photoshop Secrets collection, but I'm going to show you how to do it here. So I'm just going to create a new layer, go to Edit, Fill, and make sure Contents is set to black, and press OK. Now I'm going to change this to Soft Light. And look at the difference in the sky here. We now have some yellows and more contrast and vibrancy in the sunset area. Now I'm going to select these two areas and press Command and G or Control and G to group them. And I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on a PC and left click on this Add Layer Mask button and make this layer invisible. Now we need to blend this exposure into our scene very naturally. And I'm going to do this with luminosity masks. Now, if you don't have any luminosity masks, you can download my free easy panel, the link to which is popping up right now in the video, or you can find it in the description of this video. If you don't want to download the easy panel, there's also a link to a video in the description of this video, which will show you how to make your own luminosity masks. So for now, I'm just going to use Raya Pro, and I'm going to create some bright luminosity masks. Now, if we go to our channels palette, we can see... Brights 3 has a nice selection of our highlights. So 
we can go to luminosity masks and choose brights 3. And I'm going to press Command and H or Control and H to hide the marching ants and make sure the mask is selected. Now I'm going to select the paintbrush, set the foreground to white, and I'm going to make a nice big paintbrush and set the opacity to 100%. And I'm just going to paint in this area. And you can see it's done a very nice, smooth job of restoring those highlights. And obviously this is a little bit too strong, so all we need to do is reduce the opacity a little bit. And that is the before and after. We can zoom into the tree and we can see that the blending is still natural. There's no edging at all around the tree. So if we group these two and press Ctrl and G, we can see the before and after. This is the image we started with and after blending, this is the image we finished with. And again, we can reduce the opacity ever so slightly if we want to make the sky a bit brighter. Now I know that using different blending techniques might look complex and it seems to take a long time, but really it only takes a minute or two. It's not a particularly difficult process. It just requires a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience. But it's absolutely worth it if you want to come out with the cleanest possible images. Now again, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if you want to send me your raw files, you can do that at challengejimmymac at gmail.com, and I look forward to seeing your photos. Thank you very much, and see you next time.